Hello, it's Dr. Doris from Revitalize MD. So at Revitalize MD, we do all things aesthetics, wellness, and sexual wellness. And today I have multiple guests with me and, you know, almost half the team, right? So Samantha is here Hi, with me. I'm Samantha. I'm the manager at Revitalize MD. And then <laughs> Meredith is with us. Hello, I'm Meredith Wallace, and I guess I'm considered a skin specialist at Revitalize MD. So I have been there for almost a year now, I guess. Mm -hmm. So nice to be here with you all today. And then we have our special guest um, and our lead guest today, which is Marissa. And she's going to say a few words. I'm Marissa Staten. I'm a laser technician as well as a medical esthetician. I've been in the cosmetic industry since 1999, and hello. All right, well, perfect. So we want Marissa to talk to us a little bit about retinol because she's, like, perfect um, about educating patients that come in and even all of our staff on retinol products. So we were going to let her talk to us about retinol and how beneficial it is to use at a very early age and encourage the rest of us to use it <laughs> this is that would be helpful <laughs> well retinol is a um, a pure one of the purest vitamin a's out there um and it's also an antioxidant that everyone can use i love my retinol i think everyone should have it uh there's different percentages out there and there's different reasons why everyone should actually be using it Anywhere from acne scars to wrinkles to hyperpigmentation, um, just increasing the cell turnover is what it's going to do for you. What I think is real interesting about cell turnover, it's something that I learned going into starting um, my journey into aesthetics, is just that your cells turn over your, every 28 days. And so, again, the healthier that our cells are, and in, in that turnover, you know, the younger that your skin looks, again, you know, retinol basically is helping us turn that over, right, Marissa? Mm -hmm. Yes, they actually, the cells turn over every 28 days while we're young. As we age, they actually start to slow down and can get up to turning over every 90 days. So what we want to do is keep that going to it's like every 28 days um, to get the actual benefits of retinol. So that is the reason that you really need the retinol because it helps that uh, just helps your cells turn over faster because that uh, it Sucker punches the dermis so you can actually get the benefits versus just exfoliation. So I learned something new from Marissa every time I talk with her about skincare. <laughs> so I didn't know that. Um, Do you want to tell them the differences between the different strengths and who should mm -hmm. use what? And maybe like a pattern of my mm -hmm. what might be best in order to, if they're not using retinols at all, what would be best case scenario, whether it be age or the differences between their skins and why they should use 0.5% or 1% or so on and so forth. That might be helpful for somebody like me that doesn't use retinols often, if at all. Um, if you're honest. Probably, <laughs> because I'm honest, that would probably be a great place to start for some people. There's a lot of different percentages out there. And there's some products that have a whisper of retinol. There's some products that have a 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0.25%, 0 0.5, 1%. Occasionally, you'll see some other random versions, but that's the usual. Um, anybody can use a 0 0.2, 0 0.25 without any unnecessary um, redness or sensitivity. But most people probably want to do a 0 0.5. However, you can baby step it into uh, the, the world of retinol and vitamin A by starting with the 0 0.2 or 0.25 or 0.3 um, and use a tube of that and then bump up to the 0 0.5 because what your skin is going to do is going to build up tolerance and acclimate to the percentage where you can use it up to, well, I'd say seven days a week, but that's sometimes unrealistic. Five days a week is my goal mm -hmm. um, for most everybody. Um, so anyway, starting off at a lower dosage and then going up to a higher percentage is what I recommend. And you can overlap that to get your skin used to it. When I started using retinol, I started on the 0.5 and I used it five days on and then two days off. And for the first two weeks, I thought that I was extremely tough and that my skin could take anything. And it wasn't until that two week mark 
that is when my face started peeling a ton. And that's when I came to Marissa. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm peeling everywhere. And she was like, yeah, you need to take like a step back from it. So I think a lot of people think that they're starting off really strong. I can also say my stepmom did the same thing when she started on the point three, the first two weeks, she was like, no peeling at all. She was like, I'm not even burning when I put it on. And then she texted me like, oh, th- two weeks in, I'm peeling this is, everywhere. This is sissies. <laughs> yeah. She, she was like, what do I do now? I was like, okay, you have to like dial back because that's what Marissa told me as well. I usually, like, I use the three day rule is um, according to what percentage that you have mm-hmm. and you're using, and especially just starting off, you can use it uh, if you're starting off with a point two or point three, mm-hmm. something like that. Um, use it three days in a row. And then skip a couple of days or just say every other day. Now, if it was a 0.5% you were starting off with, I would probably say once the first week, second week, probably See, twice, <laughs> just it, it, especially if you've never used anything mm-hmm. like that. It's There's a method to the madness. But um, if you ever have a sensitivity building up to it, mm-hmm. um, I would probably say use the three-day rule. Stay off mm-hmm. of it for three days, three to four days until your the sensitivity or excessive peeling is gone mm-hmm. and then start back up. But you don't want to wait too long. Because if you wait too long, you're not your skin's not going to acclimate yeah. to it. But I usually add a day, like I'll say every other day or every third day for a week or two, and then after two to three weeks, add another day, and then add another day, yeah. and then when you have that reaction, off for three to four days. Yeah, I do it every other day now. But at first, I thought I was well, extremely I that's, tough. That's the key too. It sounds like is that it's very individual. So like it's hard to just do a cookbook. You know, this is the percentage of retinol you should use. Right. There's no recipe for for everybody's skin. Yeah. For sure. I mean, and that's true with any procedure, any chemical, any acid. Mm -hmm. There's not really, there's not really a prescription that you can give to everybody. Everybody's going to be individualized. And that's why it's important for everybody to get an individual consultation and be able to evaluate their skin and how Mm -hmm. it reacts to everything to figure out what they need. Mm-hmm. And so that they can be educated on those yeah. things to look for and three-day rules and, you know, yeah. five days. Because if a dermatologist wrote you a prescription for 1% retinol, which is probably what he would do, mm-hmm. he would send you home and tell you use it every day. And then he wouldn't understand why you were concerned about looking like a ro- lobster and face <laughs> burning and wouldn't care, actually. That's I guess what, that brings, mm-hmm. what is the difference between a retinol and a tret? Annoyed? Is that how you use tretinoid? Tretinoin. Yeah, because I've also heard derms prescribing that a ton too. A lot of tretinoids are mineral based, so they're better for the dry skin. Yeah. Um, it's just the formula of how it filters through the dermis into the dermis. That's a lot of how it works between a retinol, retinoic acid, um, and a tretinoin. It's just how the formula is created. Um, is there one that's stronger than would, the other? or? Think that like even from like my you know understanding of it is again tretinoin or retinoic acid or almost always prescription and you know I'm not sure there might be some products that aren't but it sounds like you know that might be based on the percentage but most of those are prescription in the active ingredient so when we do a retinol which is more cosmetic and can be in lots of different products then is turned into retinoic acid in the skin. And so, but then it does depend on the delivery, you know, into the skin and how it works. And so, you know, that is important because, for instance, if you wanted to talk about, you know, our two very different products, even with CO that we use frequently, Mm -hmm. and, you know, Marissa and I, you know, probably our favorites as far as retinol, at least mine, but they react, your skin reacts completely differently to those two. What are the products? It is uh, the Radical Night Repair mm-hmm. by Zio Skin Health, as well as the Wrinkle mm-hmm. and Texture, Wrinkle mm-hmm. Plus Texture Repair. Mm-hmm. Uh, both of those are the our favorites. They also have a Retinol Skin Brightener, which mm-hmm. they have the different percentages, 0.25, 0.5, and 1%. Mm-hmm. But, and I like those very well because they do have a, a, an extra brightening effect. But mm-hmm. the Radical Night Repair has um, a retinoic acid, and it is more superficial. So it is going to retexture the skin superficially, whereas the wrinkle plus texture, I know that gets confusing when I say it that way, but it's called wrinkle plus texture repair. That actually sucker punches into the dermis because it has a micronized 
very small molecular structure that's going to penetrate <clears throat> deep into the dermis. And, you know, you were, you were saying about five, well, no, you were saying two weeks later, mm -hmm. well, about five days of using it in a row, you're going to wish you hadn't. Yeah. <laughs> um, that one is when you, those two products, period, you do want to baby step those because mm -hmm. they will, you'll wake up one day and you're like, what Jump have I done? Fast. Right. What have I done? <laughs> um, and that's good because your skin's going to acclimate to that. But it's those two, you definitely want to baby step a little bit more, um, you know, a couple of times, a couple of days a week. The reaction is similar but different, whereas the radical night repair is going to be more superficial and the wrinkle and texture is going to be very deep. And which you were asking about a tretinoin, mm -hmm. just jumping over into that. The wrinkle and texture, wrinkle plus texture repair um, is better. It's a great comparative to a tretinoin. Yeah, I was going to say, you told me that one. Mm -hmm. The tretinoin has usually got a mineral oil in it. So someone who's acne prone can't use that. They'll probably start breaking out and have so redness and peeling and mm -hmm. sensitivity. Um, but they would do better with the recall and texture because it's oil free, but it's still going to give them the benefits that they need mm -hmm. and very active ingredients. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I do think that for me, those two, if I use radical night repair, the next day I'm kind of itchy and irritated and red unless if I've used it for a while. So you do acclimate, but I would definitely recommend almost like once mm -hmm. for starting where, you know, wrinkle and texture repair, like you said, isn't as superficially irritating. But but one thing I love and people don't know and I've just played with because if I read like their protocols is you can actually use wrinkle and texture repair as almost like a peel. Mm -hmm. And so if somebody you know, was traveling, you know, had some downtime where they wanted to kind of peel and couldn't get into the office, they can do that on a nightly basis for, I think, three to five nights. Based Which, on your tolerance. Again, we're telling you, you start with one, so you so you know what's <laughs> going to happen at three or five, and like you will be peeling by the end of it. So mm -hmm. it is kind of a home peel you can use. Um, yes, you know, so the advanced, excuse me, the re radical night repair also has anhydrous ingredient or excuse me an hydrous product which means it doesn't have any water in it um so the more you rub the product into the skin the deeper it's going to penetrate even though it's not going to penetrate like the wrinkle plus texture mm -hmm. it's still going to penetrate a little bit deeper and make it more active because it's gonna the water in the skin is going to activate it so <laughs> that's also another thing the more you rub it the more benefit you're going to get from it um and using it several days in a row is just like you're doing a chemical peel at home. Mm -hmm. So be prepared. <laughs> and when do you think that people should start using, at what age should they start using a retinol? Or when is too early? Or? Mm, I'm, that's really uh, according to the person. Mm -hmm. But if they were acne prone, I would say at age 15. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, maybe I'd start them off on a low percentage mm -hmm. or we would talk, we would talk in depth on what, where, and how. Mm -hmm. um, whereas 21, mm -hmm. I mean, 18, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Just as long as they know how to use it, because you know, don't sometimes be younger no. <laughs> adults don't take care of their skin mm -hmm. properly. So, no. remind me to Marissa, how at when do they need to stop? After how long do they need to stop taking something like Accutane before they yeah. would start using a retinol, or is that even a thing? Can there be overlap with those? I would say six months. Okay. Um, it used to be a year. It's according to what else they're doing. I would say no less than six months. Right. I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. And if they were on the strong, the strongest uh, Accutane, I'd probably say longer. A year. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would um, there's evaluate some, their skin there's before some I would kids ever put that them are on starting it. out at 13, 14 yeah. years old yeah. anymore. Yeah. So I just think that's a low a low dose of mm. retinol would probably serve them better. Yeah, and so. right. Mm. There is a that. percent, um, an Accutane lowest dosage that you can take and not be considered to be on it or less downtime right. or less side effects that you can do more with. But most people don't, at least the dermatologists in our area, they just write them the strongest prescription and send them on their way right? and don't tell them anything else, just like they do with the retinol. So education is best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or tell them to use sunscreen. <laughs> and which is a whole different Sun topic. Hydration. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And For comfort and soothing when they need it. Brings yeah. us to the fact that it is a whole different topic mm -hmm. with acne because there's some things you can do that don't involve Accutane or prescription. 
you know, and that would be for a whole nother mm-hmm. round table discussion on, day. on other options for acne treatment, you know, that don't include prescription drugs, um, including antibiotics and mm-hmm. um, Accutane. Mm-hmm. And Anything else you can do? I do want to say something else about Accutane. It's something that... Uh, the dermatologists are not educating people about. And again, I'm really referring more to um, stronger versions of Accutane that it dries a female's body out so much that I did have a client that had to have surgery because she uh, was not told she couldn't wear tampons. So I'll leave it there. So Accutane is very strong and definitely... Um, there should be more education on why you shouldn't go on Accutane and do, and do everything else before you have to. So stay tuned last for resort. that. that right. Stay tuned for that. It's the last resort. <laughs> yeah. I think any medication and surgery should be considered a last resort. So I think you should try everything you can prior to getting to that point because Accutane is a very harsh prescription. Mm-hmm. As they say, it has to be, it's only prescribed by dermatologists for the most part. I wouldn't prescribe it. You have to follow it closely. Um, and you have to follow the blood test closely with it. So, yeah, yeah. lots of other things. Pregnancy test every month for females. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So it, coming to even that simple, you know, topic is, do you feel like retinols? What are your, what's your um, opinion on retinols and pregnancy or women of childbearing? You, should they be on a retinol? Is it a problem? Or is retinol okay and maybe retinoic acid is not or is there any? I would say um, if they're trying to get pregnant, if a female's trying to get pregnant or is pregnant or breastfeeding, I would not do I would not do retinoic acid or retinols in general, just because I maybe there's research that I'm unaware of, but most people are not gonna do research on a on a pregnant woman. Mm-hmm. Just because we don't want to find out that the ingredients did anything negative or had any negative side effects. Um, but as far as young adults that might be in childbearing years, absolutely. Just if they find out they are pregnant, that they would want to stop, discontinue the use immediately. Okay. Any other questions? Or no, Well, definitely, if anyone listening um, has any questions at all or any topics that you want us to cover, Definitely put it in the comment section. We're willing to dive deep into anything. Aesthetics, wellness, sexual wellness. Not afraid to talk about anything. Yeah, you can call the office or text us to make a consultation with Meredith or Marissa to go over all the skincare options that we have. So And or wellness. Yeah. And so definitely remember, we're here to revitalize your look, your health, and your sex life. So any questions, topics you want to cover, just drop them in the comment box or send them to us. And stay tuned for the next video or podcast. Thank you guys for all the information. Thank you. Bye. Bye.